Kenneth Branagh is one of my favorite actor-directors alive today. I consider him one of the greatest British actors, and more specifically, one of the greatest Shakespearean actors that I've ever seen on film. Branagh was first introduced to me through his many narrations of BBC productions. And as I studied Shakespeare in high school and university, Branagh's more well-known work came to my attention. Plus, I saw him in such films as Rabbit Proof Fence, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Valkyrie, and, regrettably, Wild Wild West. With that info aside, I will now provide you with a requested review of a film that's not really remembered anymore, despite it having been a considerable success during its day, and still having a very famous cast. Dead Again. This was made in 1991, directed by Branagh and starring him as well. The movie was one of the very first screenplays by Scott Frank, who would later go on to write Get Shorty and Minority Report. Dead Again was Kenneth Branagh's second directorial film. Branagh had just been nominated for two Oscars for his directorial debut, Henry V, and now had a chance to follow up his newfound success with something great. Did he succeed? Reasonably enough, I'd say. Dead Again is a film drenched in the fascinating subject of reincarnation, as well as mystery. The film preys upon our sense of thrills through an excellent use of suspense, music, and sheer talent of the people involved. Kenneth Branagh shrugs off his British accent, and instead takes two different ones to play two different roles. One is an American private investigator named Mike Church, trying to help a woman who has no idea what her identity is and at the start of the film can't even speak. The woman was played by Branagh's wife at the time, who was no less than the well-known British actress Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson also has an American accent in the film, and having seen these two in many other films prior to this one with their usual accents, it was a treat in and of itself to hear these two thespians master an entirely different accent and make it sound almost natural. The woman later chooses the temporary name Grace. With the help of a hypnotist played by Derek Jacobi, Grace realizes that she is having flashback moments into a past that isn't hers. They are instead memories of a past life, supposedly. The past life of piano-playing celebrity Margaret Strauss, who was married to German composer Roman Strauss. Thompson and Branagh play these fictional roles as well, with Branagh giving us a German accent to boot. The film follows Mike and Grace's struggle to find Grace's real name and identity, as well as going into the story of Roman and Margaret. We're told in the beginning of the film that Margaret Strauss was famously murdered with a pair of scissors in her throat, and her husband Roman was sentenced to death after being found guilty. We're also told that journalist Gray Baker, played by Andy Garcia, visited Roman Strauss the day he was executed and had one last conversation where Roman may or may not have confessed his crime to him. In the present day, the woman that is given the name Grace is plagued with recurring nightmares of the past, as well as a deathly fear of scissors. Mike places an ad in the newspaper for any clues as to who she really is, and in their time together, they start to fall for each other. Aiding them in their search is Franklin, a kind but eccentric hypnotist who helps both Grace and Mike in their search for both Grace's identity as well as a cure to Grace's nightmares. Another person who aids them is an ostracized and disbarred doctor named Cozy Carlyle, played by Robin Williams. Jacoby and Williams are both successful in creating two unique characters with little quirks and interesting charisma. The hypnotist scenes are appropriately soothing and entrancing, allowing the audience to get into the mood of the scenes easier. The film is overall a competent thriller, and the big shock of the film had my facial reaction completely synchronized with Branagh's in the film. Seriously, we both reacted exactly the same way. Unfortunately, the film's undoing is Branagh's love for the hyperbole. Just like the way Branagh uses hyperbole in his other films, sometimes it works wonderfully, 
and other times it's just silly. But however over the top it gets or not, the film is aided by a very haunting soundtrack that uses classic songs from the period that the movie set in, as well as a soundtrack by regular Branagh collaborator Patrick Doyle. Together with Branagh's skillful use at creating well-filmed scenes, we're given an altogether decent film. Considering this was only his second work, I think Branagh did quite a respectable job. I mean, there was no question at the time that he was a brilliant actor, and while he was also a competent director even then, it was clear he needed a bit more practice at directing. Thankfully, he got his chance, and he has continued to have a decent, if underrated, career. And I'm always glad when he gets a stroke of good fortune. I personally have never been so excited about a comic book adaptation as Thor, and my eager attention to the project started purely thanks to the fact that Branagh was directing. Certainly I plan to see it this year, and maybe even give it a Jimmy Stellar review. And I'll go into it with high hopes. I've learned to expect much from Branagh, and while he doesn't always match those expectations, the audience is usually in for something good. Dead Again is certainly an example of a good film that Kenneth Branagh has made, thanks to the supporting cast, to his then-wife, Emma Thompson, thanks to a production team who was given the difficult task of setting half the story in World War II and the other half in closer to the present day, thanks to Scott Frank, who was even then a very interesting screenwriter, and most of all, thanks to Kenneth Branagh.